Today we're going to take a look at some of the new motion effects that's been added to this currently beta version of Elementor. We're going to see how you implement them, what's on offer and how easy they are to start using in your designs. Now these features are still currently in beta so please don't go ahead and use these if you are testing them out on a live site. It's not ready for lifetime so make sure you only test this on a development or on a local setup. Okay, so with that being said, what exactly are we looking at today? Well, we've had motion effects for a while. We could do things like apply sticky and so on to headers and different elements on our page. Now we have a whole new range of different effects we can use. So how do we start using these new motion effects? Well, it's very, very simple. We can use them in multiple different ways. Let's start off by seeing how we can do it on a section as opposed to, for example, a text block or something. So let's just set the section we want to work with. So we're going to choose this header area at the top. Come to the Advanced tab and you can see we've got the Motion Effects panel. If we expand that, the Sticky option and the Entrance Animation are both there that we've had for quite some time now. But we now have the Scrolling Effects option. And if we enable that, you can see that opens up a panel that gives us a ton of different options. So we've got Scrolling Effects and we've got things like Vertical Scroll, Horizontal, Transparency, Blur and so on. So these all have different settings that allow you to use them in different ways. You can stack these on top of each other as well. So let's just say, let's just do something really simple. Let's adjust the transparency or blur, for example. Let's just come down and we'll say, we'll start off with the transparency and you can see we've got controlling of the direction. So we can have fade in, fade out, fade out, in, in, out. We can also specify the level of fade that we want. So you can see as we adjust that, we get different effects of the amount of fade. We can also adjust the viewport. So in other words, what position it has to be in before we'll start to see these effects take effect. So we'll see if we move that and we scroll, you can see as we scroll down the effect lessens. So let's just say we want to pull this down like so, get it perfect. And you can see now as we scroll down the page, it gets darker. If we flip that the opposite way, it'll do the opposite. You can see it'll fade out as we scroll down the page. So we can just ramp that up if we want to, to get it right the way up to the full effect. And you can see as we scroll down, we pretty much take the header to nothing at all. Like I say, we can stack these on top of each other. So we're not limited just using one single effect. So we can say we want to put the blur on there as well. And you can see as we scroll down, the blur lessens, but it also becomes totally transparent. Obviously we can flip that the opposite way as well, and we'll get a different effect. So you can see it's easy to start stacking these on top of each other. However, you'll also notice that it affects everything inside this particular section. You may not always want that to be the case. So we do have control over some of the other things we can do. So let's just disable that effect. And instead of choosing the entire section this time, let's come down and do something like just choose this Justice Today block. If we come to Advanced, you'll see we still have motion effects. We can still open that up, but we now have two options available. We have the scrolling effects, which we just saw. We also have mouse effects. So let's enable the mouse effects first of all. You can see that gives us two options. We can use mouse track and 3D tilt. Again, these are stackable, so we can put one on top of the other or choose whichever one we want. So you see at the moment, nothing actually happens because we've activated the mouse effects, but we haven't actually set anything we wanted to do. So let's just do something like the mouse track. Let's click on that. You can see we've got the opposite direction or the direct direction. We've also got the speed that we want to use. So we can see that will now track our mouse movement as we put our mouse over that header section. As we scroll out of it, it stops and we no longer see that effect. So you can see, let's just reset that one. Now let's try the 3D tilt. So you can see as we now mouse over, that tilts in 3D space nice and smoothly. And again, we can adjust things like the speed so we can have that a much more subtle effect if we want to. Again, we can do direct and opposite. So we've got the movement will appear in the opposite direction to our mouse movement this time. And if we also want to use the scrolling effects, we can do that as well. So we can easily enable the scrolling effects. And you can see we can do things like on vertical scroll, horizontal scroll, scale, rotate. So we can do a lot of different things. So we can see we can now affect just that particular element as opposed to the entire section. So you can get quite creative with how you want to do this. So let's reset that a second. And let's just do something like the transparency. So you can see we'll set that on there. So now as we scroll down, it becomes more solid. As we move up, it becomes more opaque. And you can see the animation effect is all still in effect on top of that. So you can easily stack these up and get some quite cool, quite interesting effects for your website.
Now, one other thing worth noting is the fact that we can also still specify what types of device these effects are actually going to be displayed on. You can see we've got desktop, tablet, and mobile. So depending upon the kind of effect that you want to create, it might be more relevant to a desktop as opposed to a tablet or mobile, or vice versa. So you can see you can target those devices incredibly easily just to make sure that the user experience isn't degraded if you are doing something that looks great on a mobile with mouse interaction, but then doesn't really work very well when you're using your finger on a tablet or a mobile device. So always worth keeping those in mind. Now, while we're speaking about keeping things in mind, I would always recommend using things like this incredibly sparingly. You don't want a site that has all these interactions just for the sake of those interactions and motion effects. Use something that's subtle, that really does get the point across, but also doesn't detract from the end user's experience of using and interacting with the website. So bear that in mind when you're using these effects. Now this video wasn't about going into all the different kinds of motion effects you have available, just to show you how easy they are to use and also the options that you have available. Now, for my opinion, I think this is one of those things that I would rather see the developers at Elementor concentrate on fixing some of the problems that are there with Elementor and Elementor Pro, and also fleshing out some of the features that have been kind of introduced over the last six to 12 months, but really haven't been finalized. So. It's great to have these kinds of things in there, but I'd rather have that functionality of making sure that all the tools I need to build a great website are there before I worry about adding those little sort of sprinkles on top that are not necessarily something that the end user really cares too much about, but it is good to see that we do have these visual options. I just hope that Elementor will go back and make sure they focus on those key things and sorting out some of the problems that people are still experiencing when working with Elementor and Elementor Pro. That's just my two pence worth, and I'd love to get your feedback on what you think about this new feature inside Elementor. Could you see yourself using it, or would you rather developers focus their time and efforts on making sure that the core Elementor is as good as it possibly can be, get rid of some of those bugs, flesh out some of those things that are still missing inside Elementor? Let me know in the comment section below. I love getting your feedback on this kind of thing. Speaking of the comment section below, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. That's perfectly fine. But let me know in the comment section why you did or didn't like the video. It helps me create better content for you moving forward. As always, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.